everyone, this is Yusai. Welcome to Let's Talk. And today is a very special day because I have my friend here, Hamina, with me. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Where are you at right now? I'm in Minnesota. As you can kind of see, I'm home. <laughs> You're home in the best part of the house. You're in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I FaceTimed you right before this and you were cooking. So I was like, okay, I have to start making something for myself. <laughs> well, this week is such a special week on Let's Talk that we invited five incredible supermodels, superwomen doing incredible things for the community, especially during this time that giving back is the most important. So I'm so happy you can join me today and share some of the amazing stories of us together. And for those who doesn't know Hamina, or I know most of you do, but for those who don't, they join us for the very first time. That Hamina is known for a model of the mini first. And we're going to talk about all those mini firsts together today. But first, before we begin, I want to thank you for being here because being on Let's Talk already, you helped donate 500 masks to first responders. So that's what we've been doing. And and with your help, with your help of matching our donation, we'll be able to donate a thousand masks today. So thank you so much. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it, you. It is so important for all of us to find ways to give right now, whether it's a small amount of donation, whether it's uh, partner, partnering with different organizations. And that's something that you have been doing through your entire career as a model. Let's start talking about that. Mm -hmm. What are some of the relationships that you have developed over the last few years? And we know that your career blossomed like mm -hmm. so fast and it's such a yeah. fast trajectory. What did you do with that success and the platform that you were able to gain and how were you able to speak to your audience? Aw, Yutsai, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Um, and so as some of you guys may know, like for me, I always wanted to combine fashion with activism and I did enter the, you know, world of fashion in a slightly unconventional way. I competed in Miss Minnesota USA in 2016 and of course that event launched my career into modeling. And yeah, really it started in that first meeting with my agency at IMG where we sat down, I sat down with my agents and we just talked about the fact that, you know, like I don't just want to be a model, I want to have a platform where I'm giving back to my community. And, and being what, the first job wearing model, like that was and I, don't, and I don't want to just brush over that being the first woman <laughs> Yeah in Minnesota pageant. It's not very obvious that you yeah. are representation of diversity in religion, uh -huh. in belief, in the way you dress and where you hold mm -hmm. to you who you are. And I think that is so important for for your fans who knows you, this is what you represent, mm -hmm. and for those people who are new here, that mm -hmm. you were the very first to hit mm -hmm. that runway with hijab on and people mm -hmm. mouth were dropped because they were so shocked how brave, number mm -hmm. one, and then number two, how beautiful you were. And I really give credit to IMG for recognizing mm -hmm. that diversity is so important. No longer were we looking at how tall you were or when you were size two, size four, mm -hmm. size six. And, mm -hmm. and what they found was that there's a resounding mm -hmm. moment to have a voice that needs to be told and yeah. you, for that moment and I, I think that is so incredible because when you hit that scene when you hit the scene of modeling mm -hmm. it wasn't about modeling any longer you and i both know that it was about responsibility of sharing what you believe and just being you you know yeah i think and that's the beautiful thing about now i think now more than ever models can have a voice like we're seeing girls like ashley graham like even with your pod you know what you're i'm calling it a podcast but let's be honest we're headed towards a podcast <laughs> but you put what you're doing with the show, let's talk, you know, inviting models on and you clearly see like these are girls and women who have things that they're passionate about, organizations that they're working with. And it's not just modeling and like physical looks and, you know, who has the best legs. Like these are women who are actively doing things to impact our communities. And, and the fact is that a lot of models and a lot of actresses mm -hmm. do so much work silently and, yeah. and that's amazing we applaud them for that but yeah. during this time and during this difficult time i find it so important to create this platform for people to talk about it and not mm -hmm. so much so for them to tap on themselves on the back and say oh yeah. good job i'm doing a good job but by the fact that we're mm -hmm. here because of a virus yeah we can spread our own good kindness of virus by showing mm -hmm. people what we do little, much, whatever it is, let that kindness become the new virus that brings yeah. all community. You know, and that's how we have to look at it because, because we are fighting this thing and blindly. 
But what we do know, being kind is not a blind gesture, right? And, and so for some of us, we're learning how to be kind in, a, in an isolated way. And you have been so loudly and kind to the community and inspiring so many young girls. Do you find that through this time, and before even this time, that being that voice held a lot of responsibility? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime that you are doing something publicly, there is that, you know, tremendous responsibility that's placed on your shoulders to be a good role model and just representative. And for me, like, I was super uh, more sensitive because I knew, like, okay, I'm the first hijab wearing model. So with that comes a lot of expectations and, you know, responsibility and pressure, yes, but it's also changing the way you know, young women in my community, like, see themselves represented, you know, now more than ever, you know, I'm so excited because I always tell people, you know, being the first and having that title means absolutely nothing if there's not a second, a third, a fourth. And today, like, I'm not the only one. I have so many beautiful sisters of mine, oh. Bob, like, just modern day supermodels who are wearing hijab and it's being celebrated. And I'm no longer just like in that bubble of like, oh, to fit, you know, like a checklist. It's a movement and girls are entering the industry. And even more important, they're knowing that they don't have to conform or change who they are in order to fit into the mold, in order to find success in fashion. They know that fashion will meet them where they stand. And we're talking about really influencing the fashion industry because hijab mm -hmm. wearing, wearing is, is mm -hmm. percentage of people who, who do religiously <laughs> and lifestyle and yeah. the population is huge, but because yeah. in the egocentric fashion environment, we often just narrow ourselves from Paris, Milan, London, mm -hmm. and and then we have New York and LA. Mm -hmm. And in that world, we kind of categorize this is what fashion is. But mm -hmm. the fact that in the last three years, you have introduced a new fashion conversation. Mm -hmm. It's it is resounding. I saw your beautiful story in Arabia Vogue how gorgeous oh. that story was and how powerful that was. And, and that's the kind of voice that makes me excited being part of this community. Because fashion to me, for those who've been watching the show, knows that it's a tug of war for me. There are days I'm super happy to be part of it. And there are days I'm kind of ashamed being part of it because we are so self-absorbed and we, we, we lack of consciousness of what we do affect others. Having a beautiful jacket sometime, having an amazing purse, living their best life. It's not always what we should put forward to inspire people. And I think that's why I love what you do, that you pick brands that you work with, that is not about flashy, it's not about look at my logo, more about mm -hmm. the action they take on the everyday life mm -hmm. to our community. I want to talk about those 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 initiatives that you work with. You have a project with the UN, part of the mm -hmm. 17 initiative, and I love that story because I've talked to Alessandra about it. Which one is your initiative with that with uh, the UN? Yeah, so for me, it's actually goal 11, so economic growth and decency, and nice. sorry, um, oh, sorry, my roommate just came in, <laughs> sorry, global <laughs> sustainable development goal 8, not 11, but 11 was my first one, that's the one I wanted mm. to go towards, but mine ended up being um, decent work and economic growth, um, only because, you know, I grew up in a refugee camp in Kenya, and I saw firsthand the work that UN, UNHCR did for me in my childhood. And like, it was important that now that I have this platform, I'm older, um, I wanted to combine that fashion with activism and just getting back to like the organizations that supported us when we needed them the most. Now it's my turn to support them. And it's such an amazing organization because there are 17 initiatives that's put out there. And the goal is to reach this initiative at 2030. And that's just around the corner. That's only 10 years away. And what's lovely and amazing about it is that for every bracelet that you purchase, you get yeah. one free to give to someone else, to educate yeah, someone. To, yeah. that you love and share the initiative. And Alessandra is sending me hers, which is- But I she's believe, doing ocean, right? She she's is. all about the ocean and preserving. It's amazing. I think each one of us will find something that we can we can attach ourselves to, we're passionate about. And I think that's really important to touch up on. Mm -hmm. There's so many charities out there. There's so many fundraisers out there. Mm -hmm. and, and mass giving, like we're doing here, you have a project doing that as well. But what's most important, you really want to find something that you personally passionate about, that you can contribute in your own way. And there's no excuses. You and give you 17 to pick from you guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think what you just said, it's exactly that. There's something that speaks for everybody 
And at the end of the day, like a lot of the, you know, goal points, it's things that affect all of us regardless. But of course, like Alessandra, you know, she was drawn to the ocean because, yes. you know, growing up in Brazil, it's very personal. And for me, I grew, you know, grew up in Kakuma. So I saw firsthand, you know, poverty and the effects that it, the long lasting effects that it has on generations of family. And I saw that pain, you know, like poverty, you know, cycle where it's just pain, poverty, repeat, you know, so for me, economic growth and decent work, because, you know, it's unfortunate that so many of the world's workers, you know, over 500 million, I believe the, um, you know, estimation was, are working every single day in the labor field, and they're making less than $3.20 a day, a day, That's like facts like that should, should break our hearts. Yes. And what is important that to know that this is not a regional initiative. This is a global initiative. Global, this, yeah. this is not this is not hunger in your backyard, this world hunger, this world yeah. poverty. This is not economics that's just happening in the United States. This is world economics. And I think that is so amazing to be part of. And I know I'm gonna sign up to one of those initiatives because of you yeah. guys. And I wanna be part of the the, the solution and yeah. for, for making changes. And it's, it's, it's amazing. And this is something that you've been doing before the pandemic. And I think that's important to know that mm -hmm. we all should be doing positivity mm -hmm. throughout. And yeah. Yes, during this time. Actually, when, when uh, you know, COVID-19 was like, you know, just starting to hit Asia, and it hasn't really spread to America, London at the time, I actually uh, went and spoke at the Davos uh, World Economic Forum with Together Band to talk about the 17, you know, sustainable development goals and what everybody can be doing to support but that was like right before, you know, things got really crazy. And, you know, it's it's kind of crazy because the stuff that we talked about at the forum and all the things that I've learned, there are things that are, you know, they were happening before the pandemic and actually yeah. the pandemic made it worse now. Absolutely. And but at least during this time, I do this talk and to so many different people that one thing I have seen and learned is that there is a silver lining in all this, mm -hmm. is that we are globally sharing a cause. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. a really rare situation because where countries are very isolated on their own, their own economic struggles. Now we know that this is not just a regional thing. This is not a country thing. This is a global thing. And for all of us to know that hunger it's not just within your own region that you have to make the effort to help everyone. And I feel like we're all starting at the same starting block all over again in life. And, yeah. through, this, and through this time, I'm sure you go through the same thing that we all evaluate, what do we do? I'm mm -hmm. sure you went through the worry of, how am I going to, to, mm -hmm. to continue my career? And mm -hmm. I, I know that that's everybody's struggle for mm -hmm. models, for actors, for people who work at a store, for people who, mm -hmm. who are health workers. They, they, they all worry that what, what's going to become next, like mm -hmm. how are we going to survive this? And, and I don't have an answer for it, but I do yeah. know one thing is that what helped me personally throughout this mm -hmm. is not asking what's going to happen next, it's mm -hmm. asking what's happening now mm -hmm. and try to find solution for now. Right. Yeah. And and all of us find it in a different ways. And and I I have to admit, I don't have a personal cause or organization mm -hmm. I've been working with like you. you but do. you Tsai, you've been can we just talk about even like matching today? I'm so excited to match you, but you've been doing this and you were actually one of the very first people in fashion to jump on MJ Day as well and you know the entire SI team to come up with you know donating masks to healthcare workers and people on the front line. So actually you need to give yourself a lot of credit because you were one of the pioneers of like jumping before it was even like you know a lot of because a lot of us were shocked at first like how do we even get involved mm -hmm. but I feel like you did not miss a beat immediately you were like okay. Well thank um, you for that. But yeah, that even was starting this, you know, conversations, <laughs> taking people's minds away from, you know, what's happening in the pandemic and, you know, bringing positivity to people's lives. I think that what you're doing is so important. Thank you for that. And I, I have to give the credit to those people like Camila Costa, who who mm -hmm. raised money and, and donated masks to the hospitals mm -hmm. around New York. Mm -hmm. It was that, you know, and, and like I said earlier, and I echo mm -hmm. that. I needed to be influenced by the influencers. I was watching and learning because I too, in the very beginning, 
was really worried about what to come with my photography career, what to come with my with my TV production project. Mm -hmm. All the project in Asia, as you know, I film in Asia. Yeah, America's and, Next Top Model. Uh, and I, uh, Asia's Next Top Model, and I do Street to Kitchen. And everything kind of just went to full stop, and mm -hmm. and it was very scary. And and you're right. It took a moment for me to evaluate. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that there's something I can do to help, when I saw what mm -hmm. MJ was doing, what mm -hmm. Pamela was doing, what SI was doing, yeah. my brother actually was a tremendous help because he mm -hmm. is an import-export business from Asia mm -hmm. to here. He turned mm -hmm. his business into a, a connection from one thought to the other to be able to bring the mask in in a very efficient way and be able wow. to give masks to people. So that's when we started an initiative to say, okay, why mm -hmm. don't I turn this talk into something that's greater and better? Mm -hmm. I will donate every single day when there's a guest mm -hmm. that says yes to come on the show. Mm -hmm. And I encourage them to match me or mm -hmm. more. And yeah. up to now, we have angel donors like Kate Upton and mm -hmm. Mila Jovovich who helped us hit yeah. over 100,000 mask donations is, yesterday. Wow. <laughs> it's incredible. And, yeah. and, I, and that was my goal. Like, okay, mm -hmm. 100,000 masks. Personally, mm -hmm. that's financially that I can support. Yeah. So now I will be here every single day yeah. encouraging <laughs> others continue to do so because it is a new virus. I think kindness should be the mm -hmm. new virus. Instead of COVID-19, it should be kindness. 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 And 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 through through this, I think we're all in one way or the other learning yeah. to be business better business person, yeah. better teacher, yeah. better mom, better yeah. dad, and yeah. absolutely a better communicator for me. And 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 I think that's what we need. That's what we absolutely need. And because of this time, I got to learn how many amazing, wonderful things that people yeah. I know are doing. <laughs> I was just I, about to tell you. <laughs> I was just say, honestly, I did not know your amazing work with Johnson and Johnson. Oh. I did not know this. I want to. That's that's. This mm -hmm. is the time that I'm being educated by my guests. Yeah. So let me know the dedication to the community giving and how mm -hmm. I can learn from it. And you guys are an example of kindness. Let's talk about Johnson & Johnson's relationship with you. Yeah, so Johnson & Johnson, I already went to like their healthcare facilities, gotten the tour of their very first factory. And, you know, as you may know, like they are working on, well, when I worked with them, they were working on the AIDS vaccine. Mm -hmm. And now they're actually switching and like they've already been doing research on COVID-19. And so you got, you guys going to have to like, you know, follow me to see what project that they're coming out with. But it's with Lisa Ling. And it's going to be exciting because they interview all these incredible researchers and people who, you know, have been working with COVID-19 research for, you know, many years. And so I'm excited to, you know, be involved in that project. Um, but just like Johnson & Johnson, I think with all the campaigns that I work on or like partners that we have and brands that we align ourselves with, it's also about what the company is doing for community at the end of the day. So I've, you know, along with even Vital Coco, like I, it wasn't just a photo shoot in New York inside a studio. We actually flew to the Philippines and I got to see firsthand how the product was made. I got to see how they were em empowering the farmers themselves, you know, educating them on different crops and how to grow their own crops to the best of its ability. And I got to learn, you know, with their Hope, uh, Hope in a Bottle uh, campaign and partner that they had on the ground. Um, just building schools for the kids and, you know, just like the educational aspect and Vital Coco investing in school systems um, in the Philippines, you know, where they source from. So for me, I also wanted to challenge myself, you know, to pick the right, you know, partners and brands and, you know, who we work with and what they're doing for company, not companies, but, you know, the communities that they source from, most importantly, and the global, you know, community as well. Well, it's it that that is so well said because we know that in modeling, when people think model, that just means you're going to model a piece of clothing, or you or you're assign yourself to an ambassadorship, whoever gives you a paycheck to talk about this pen or this cup or or whatever yeah. product. And yeah. I've been watching you and your team and the guidance yeah. of IMG, the incredible people yeah. behind you, that yeah. really have made sure that you are truly with project that you heart you feel yeah. from the heart and they yeah. are they are in a way activism of its own by you yeah. showing what you believe in and mm -hmm. other people are watching it's an example of what a model should be now because models exactly. are no longer just 
a single picture with no words on a page of a magazine. It's yeah. about truth and authenticity. Yeah. It's about yeah. the work that you do behind the scenes. I'm so happy that you're actually able to share what Mata Coco's experience. And, and it's it's so much that these companies and organizations and brands do that they don't even highlight it. You know, like Vita Coco, they've been doing this project where they were giving back to the community and investing in school systems and investing in local farmers. And how amazing. You know? And they never publicize it. You know, they never publicize it. But it is amazing now to know that when I pick up a bottle of Vita Coco, yeah. I am too helping in, in an economic scheme of things and the trickle down effect all the way to the farmers and the crops and the educational yeah. program that Vital Coco provides for, uh, for the yeah. school and the local communities. I think that's something that more important yeah. now than ever for us to highlight and you yeah. are putting highlight on them just being part of the mm -hmm. face and part of their brand that's mm -hmm. what we need more of in our fashion yeah. industry rather yeah. than look at my gucci bag of the season and and yeah. i'm not knocking fashion please i'm in a world mm -hmm. of fashion i i shoot all the big brands on um, for the magazines but yeah. there's a new layer of responsibility comes with this mm -hmm. time and i i do say this and i said many times the silver lining is that we're all now looking mm -hmm. inward to see yeah. what we can do as a community and better at our response, better in the way we process because it comes with responsibilities. Exactly. Look at the effect of our global environmental impact the moment we stop for yeah. four weeks. Eight weeks when we stopped, wildlife are blooming, plants are, plants that are extinct are blooming. Animal they thought doesn't exist anymore came out of the woods. It's just something to be, to, to really, for us to look at evaluate and, and, and discover ourselves. I think we're no different than those animals because there yeah. are emotions that we never thought we had is coming out yeah. this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we're discovering emotions that we didn't even know. We're discovering our abilities that we didn't even know. I mean, right. I'm just going to quick show you what, like, look, I never thought I was going to be setting up a studio in my house, but look. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we so got we to gotta reinvent ourselves. And you know what? Even though, you know, things are crazy and we're all adjusting to a new normal, like, it's important to not take this time as, like, a vacation. You know, like, work on cultivating those skills that maybe you didn't have yesterday, you know, or maybe learning new habits that you didn't have time to work on you know previously i think now more than ever it's like the time for us to reflect to you know gain new skills learn new you know things there's so much that we can still do it in our control like that was like one of the biggest tips that i received from denise my manager when all this happened you know because it was so disheartening i was looking forward to 2020 like everybody else i'm sure <laughs> and like when you know all the travel bans started happening it was like disheartening but she reminded me you know like don't use this time as downtime you know this is the time for you to get creative get the juice is flowing and we got this we're all in this together because it's the first time maybe in world history where everybody you know is going through the same thing and it's affecting all of us and together we can brave this you know together we can get through it and what's amazing too is that the brands are trusting you guys as true ambassadors mm -hmm. encourage you to do photo shoots on your own yeah now you're taking my job away from me i don't like that. no 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 no, no. <laughs> No, same, but the same with, is, okay, shout out to my makeup crew, sh shout out to Nails, now more than ever, <laughs> we miss you so much, we I do. mean my eyebrows, you saw, two hours baby, two hours, I spent coloring them in, I miss you guys now more than ever, my photographers, you, like, if anything, I think this, doing it on my own at home, um, it's giving me more appreciation for mm. all the hard work that you guys have to go through on set. Thank you so, for that. The models, we're going to come back <laughs> more excited than ever to work with professionals. Uh, absolutely. I, I think that's, that's what's amazing is to watch the brands becoming more creative, yeah. more, as, more, more, because you and I know fashion yeah. industry is kind of like an old machine, yeah. right? This is yeah. how they do it. Fashion show mm -hmm. happened at this time of year. Fall, winter, whatever. Yeah. All this stuff happens just, you know, in the block. Yeah. We do this at this time, we do this. Nobody wants change. This yeah. is a forceful way of looking at fashion in a different way. And yeah. and what I love the most is how transparent we all have become. How mm. we are seeing celebrities not super glammed up. Now yeah. I know my <laughs> my sisters and brothers when glam team are yeah. wondering how are they going to stay like that so they're never going to get hired again. Beauty will never go away. Yeah. Job security on hair and makeup yeah. will never go away. <laughs> no. But I do believe 
we gotten so fixated on being mm -hmm. perfect mm -hmm. in front of a camera. Even you go out to shop to pick up mm -hmm. grocery, the celebrities are dressed up, actors are dressed mm -hmm. up to the team mm -hmm. because they're afraid to get TMZ snapped and that's going to be where they're going to be judged. But yeah. now you know what they've done? They took away those power from TMZ. Mm -hmm. They took away the power from the paparazzi. They took away mm -hmm. all that and said, this is me and I'm going to show you this now so you've seen it. You don't need to look out when I go walk my dog in my sweatpants. Yeah. I think that's team. so sad though. I <laughs> honestly, sometimes I'm like, that is sad that we're living in a world where people you know, have to even deal with that. But I don't and think we so do it anymore. I don't think they have the power anymore. I think that's mm -hmm. the that's what I think is so exciting during this mm -hmm. time is that you taking that power away from from yeah. people who want to sensationalize you because you choose to wear sweatpants one day. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? And, and that's that's the love I love. Because yeah. listen, I know some people say never wear sweatpants. I know Anna Winter had done her talk and said she would never wear sweatpants because she Oh my god, forget. I'm literally wearing sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> this is something she talked about stuck with me. She said somebody asked her, Will you ever sweat wear sweatpants? She goes, as a leader, you need to project a look and aesthetic and an attitude. I would never wear sweatpants. Mm -hmm. Well, honey, I'm wearing sweatpants right now too. <laughs> and I actually think as a leader, you should wear whatever you want and people will respect you because you lead the path of what yeah. that is. So I don't agree with her on that. I do agree with the other things she does, but that yeah. in particular, don't take the sweatpants away from us. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You I mean, I live in Minnesota, so forgive me. <laughs> I'm so far removed from any of that. Like I do my shoots in New York or wherever, but like I've never once lived in like a fashion capital. And that was actually one of the first things that I, you know, shared with my team is like I'm not relocating to a fashion capital. Like I'm gonna stay in Minnesota. So there's such a normalcy. Like you know, it's keep it's a dream. I live in a town where it's like. If I wore anything from like a t speaking engagement, people would be looking at me like, "What's this crazy woman?" You know, like they probably be taking photos because it's a jean and like sweater town, and people are like, the fashion here is so relaxed. And during the winter months, the four months that it snows, we're all modest people. Like everybody's covered head to toe, like in winter coats and like. Well, you warmers. truly are sticking to the roots who you are, but. <laughs> But you're incredible we get, when we get to transform you. And I love to talk about that. Being the very first model to grace Sports yeah. Illustrated in yeah. Burkini and yeah. being my very first time photographing a model in, 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 in Burkini. It was such a special moment. That was a, such a beautiful moment because we both share Kenya. Kenya is close to our heart. And I mean, you were studying, right? Be Am I correct? Like um, I was studying in Kenya before. With yes. the, you know, before your before you jumped to photography, like 15 years ago? Oh, more years than ago. that, but okay. I'll take 15. Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was a wildlife biologist by training, and yeah. Kenya was one of the locations that I got to travel and, and mm -hmm. stay for a bit and really to work and to look at conservation research at that time about mm -hmm. about hydration, uh, dehydration. So yeah. it was, it, it was, um, it was a beautiful time. It was an incredible time, and I really got to learn a lot. But be able to actually share that with mm -hmm. you when you got to visit Kenya for the very yeah. first time for a very long time, and to be able to shoot Sports Illustrated there, that was beautiful, and that was incredible. Mm -hmm. That was a dream come true for me, Yutsai, and I'm so grateful that you know MJ trusted you to be our photographer because you made me feel so comfortable. and. You know, it was my first time also doing a beach shoot and like swimsuit shoot. And I never in my modeling career thought I'd be an SI model, you know, or rookie. So I was super, super nervous going on set and you made me feel so comfortable. MJ Day, all the girls running around. It was like such an empowering shoot for me. Actually, one of the most empowering like moments I feel like in my career. Well, I love hearing that because I know you have mm -hmm. a lot of many amazing first mm -hmm. thing cover on Laura magazine representing mm -hmm. The you of the authentically yeah. you and then being yeah. on the cover of Vogue. Those mm -hmm. are moments of, of all moments that a lot of models strive their entire career to be. And what I love about it, you simply are being you and you land yeah. those covers. And that's something that I think a lot of models out there can learn from because mm -hmm. it's not about beauty from the outside any longer. Mm -hmm. We are truly looking at your authenticity yeah. and what you represent. And look at Ashley Graham. Gracing the cover while she's mm -hmm. pregnant. How yeah. beautiful with those images. So I have to give a nod to Condé Nast and Vogue and, mm -hmm. and the constantly pushing boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I hate to call them boundary. I shouldn't say boundary. I'm going to take that back. Constantly 
understanding the importance of diversity and evolving with time with women that need to be in power, understanding the Me Too movement, start using photographers that embraces women's beauty from a different perspective than just yeah. gawking. That is what I think when mm -hmm. I appreciate fashion the most, when I see movements like that. Because yeah. as a photographer, you know, I can tell you this, I never thought mm -hmm. I was shooting Vogue because I always meet with them over years and years. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm going to shoot Team Vogue. That's my bucket list. Oh, wow. And, yeah. and I, I truly believe it's due to the Me Too movement where a lot of photographers who are locked in those contracts are no longer on the approval list anymore. That mm -hmm. I got moved up. Oh, I was wow. always on the... Like wow. you know? <laughs> and to me, you know, good things always happen to good people. It's, it's, and it's always it's, about right timing. It's, you know, and, and I, I'm so blessed and I really mm -hmm. do say that I'm not luck but blessed to know that I didn't give up and I continue to believe that I could mm -hmm. and I just on my bucket list and I got to cross mm -hmm. it off and I want and I'm continuing to work with them. And those yeah. are the things that remind me, those are the moments that reminds me that don't mm -hmm. give up on something through yeah. you know, difficult times. In fact, like you said, through difficult times is when you should be nurturing um, the yeah. possibilities for the future. And that's yeah, my mom always said, you know, it's like hard times. They're so temporary. And even if you really look at it, it's just a matter of you just got to time it. You know, it, it's like a mental game. And if you could just train yourself to have that discipline, I'm telling you, sis, you can get through anything life, any hurdle life throws at you, anything. You know what I mean? Like you will be mentally strong enough to overcome that and come out on the other side even stronger and a better version of yourself. If you just remember, like hard times don't last, strong people do, you know? So weather through it, don't lose the hope. And, you know, I'm so grateful, like all the no's, like even for you, I'm sure you can even talk about it. Like those no's that we heard, you know, in our personal lives, you know, whether it was growing up, you know, just in life in general or career, those setbacks is what, you know, has given me at least, you know, the, the, oomph to go back harder and to like, you know, make it happen. It, it, I turn it into motivation for me. But maybe okay. you can tell us like how, because you obviously had a really long successful career as a f fashion and celebrity photographer. And so, you know, how do you overcome the no's? Um, it's, it's a great question. And, 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 and I love the way you asked that because for me, no's are, it's not just about photography, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm also an immigrant. I came to this country being a dark skin from mm -hmm. Asia. And, and being here, English second language in the very first place, mm -hmm. always very self-conscious about whether or not I should speak in public or not. And it yeah. took a long That's time. That's another thing we both have in common. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, it took a long time for me to be able to say, you know what, this is me, so I have an accent. You want to listen? Great. Yeah. If you don't, so what? My grammar is not okay. I still mm -hmm. feel confident enough to sit here and have a conversation with someone because the context is more important than my grammar. Hopefully, right. people will forgive my grammar. But what, what matters to me is this. I grew up in a very difficult situation where, where the culturally, my family and I did not agree mm -hmm. that I was very rambunctious. It's not how you grow mm -hmm. as an Asian person. And there was a lot of no's. School kicked me out because they thought mm -hmm. I was... Um, challenging i just put it that way i would disrespect when challenging but when i came to the united states i embraced the change and i really embraced able to be asked why and how and learn a new language and reestablish who i am i had that liberal moment of change mm -hmm. and i know i remember very specifically that my people with a teacher would tell me so all those no's make you stronger and you will be great out of all these no's all these difficulties yeah. And at that moment, there's one moment because I'm so defiant and I live by this still today and I talk mm -hmm. about this with students is that that's not the case. That, that wasn't the advice I needed and nor is it advice mm -hmm. I agree to this day. I actually truly believe it's because I am a strong human being. Mm -hmm. I do have the core of power to overcome those things. That's why I survived. Mm -hmm. Because I survived, I'm stronger from being the survivor through whatever hardship it is. So when people are going through a hard time, I don't remind them, this is gonna make you stronger. You yeah. know what? You yeah. already are strong enough yeah. to be in that situation. The universe puts you there and you can say God put you there. They always say mm -hmm. God doesn't put you in the places where you mm -hmm. can't handle, right? For me, yeah. it's the universe. Like, like and it's, it's who you are. You mm -hmm. decide how you wanna take that situation. So mm -hmm. all those no's I get, they're really not no's to me. They just maybe next time. 
Yeah, not right now. Not right now. Right now. Yeah. And, and, and I leave that maybe next time for myself mm -hmm. so that I can wake up and say, today might be that maybe. And I'll mm -hmm. continue to work that maybe until it becomes yes. Now, yeah. that's how I proceed to go yeah. over, to try to, you know, jump over the hurdles that's in front mm -hmm. of me. But I truly mm -hmm. believe that if you don't train yourself to learn how to jump hurdles, you don't get the strength in your leg to jump those hurdles. So yeah. you have to be strong. However you get that strength, you find your own way. For me, I believe in my own core that I'm already strong. I just yeah. need to utilize it properly. Yeah, it's like a muscle. Exercise it. <laughs> you know what? Yes, yes. And, and it's, it is hard to talk to young people. You know, you do a lot of lectures to young kids. You, to get, you do so much work with, 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 little, with young women. And when you tell them, don't worry, your hard time is going to be okay because yeah. you're, you're going to get stronger from that. Imagine yeah. changing the dynamic of that and changing a paradigm for their brain to know that you are strong. Yeah. Therefore, you will get through this. And that's what we all need in our universe right now. Yeah, I know. Agreed. Agreed. You know, we yeah. are strong together. That's why we do, we, we will get through whatever the hardship is because you are strong to begin with. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to become a lecture, but, <laughs> but it's something that's <laughs> No, I'm sitting here like, yes. You, know, you asked the like, question and I got, this, I got very passionate about it. Because not everybody agree with me when it comes to this, right? Not, every, not, not everybody agrees with that. Oh, you know, that's not true. You, you, I personally don't believe that you have to be, be mm -hmm. beaten mentally or emotionally, or whatever that you go through to, yeah. to be strong. Why yeah. do I need that? Why does anybody need that? Yeah. You know, and that's what I mean by you, you shouldn't have to actually physically go through something yeah. to know that Agreed. you're strong. That's what Agreed. I mean by it. So, Agreed. So don't but tell me and chew me out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard him. Don't do it. <laughs> no, I think that was sound advice, you know, and you're also speaking from, you know, like hurdles that you've overcome and clearly it's worked for you. That's so, right. Yeah. So the advice here is only what works for me. And I, and I carry that advice to every single day of Let's Talk. And interesting, you asked that question because yesterday I was talking to a dear friend of mine and she's like, how's it going with Let's Talk? And I go, wow, it has become an incredible educational moment for me every day for one hour. Mm -hmm. When yeah. I listened to Alessandra and Rojo yesterday, yeah. how much I got to learn from her and reflect mm -hmm. on our history together brings back amazing positivity mm -hmm. of our journey. Talking to you today, knowing that you went through the no, no, no's and then Grace mm -hmm. cover on Laura Magazine. It's no different than me hearing mm -hmm. no, 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 and also shooting for Team Vogue once yeah. again. So, yeah. so collectively, this, mm -hmm. this platform, IGTV, Let's Talk, podcast, whatever it's you want to call it, us. it's for all of us. And that's my point. It is a place that I'm learning now, and, and mm -hmm. I'm here every day learning from you guys. So I thank you for being a teacher today. Yeah, no, thank you, Yutsa. Thank you for your time, and thank you all for tuning in. This is so important because even for myself, like, you know, it brings me positivity to tune in and to see even fellow models, you know, express themselves. And, you know, we all need that little pause, you know, from just the news constantly reminding us what's happening. And, you know, <laughs> it's given me hope. So thank you. And I hope you continue to do the bus talks. I have so many good, like, you know, recommendations I have for, you know, people you can oh, reach I out love to. It. If yeah. you have recommendation of people that can continue to be an educator yeah. to me, I will. I'll send you my list. Yeah. Oh, I, will, I will absolutely love that. And on Tuesdays, um, we did it last Tuesday. We're going to try to do it every other Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, Giving Back Tuesday. We're putting a spotlight on local people who are not models, who are not famous, but who are yeah. people who are just doing great things for the community through this time. Mm -hmm. So Giving Back Thursday is really important to me. So we interview a lot of restaurant owners and as yeah. well as people who are in the food industry, how they're able to pivot and help the community. And that's, I think, any conversation right now mm -hmm. The house of community is what we need to be. And being here today, I mm -hmm. hope that our community are celebrating that we're here today and, and happy to know that, yes, we would like to go back to doing covers on magazines and yeah. shooting and so forth. But during this time, we are taking the time to evaluate and see what we can mm -hmm. do to give back to our community. And I encourage other people to do the same. Yes. So, well, thank you for so much for your time today. I, I love you so much, and you know that, and I can't wait for us to get back together to create. Mm -hmm. And whether it's ambassadorship, and it's mm -hmm. anything you you know that I can be a yeah. tribute to, I can yeah. help part of your cause, I'm yeah. there with you. because yes, you, well, I'm matching you today uh, with the mask. I'm so excited. So I'm so honored. And then, um, of course, like I just launched the Allure Anytime campaign, Banding Together, and that's, again, like they're going to be 
matching again with every purchased big oh, set, wow. they donate one to healthcare frontline workers. So it's all amazing things, but this is how we come together as a fashion community, collaborate. And at the end of the day right now, the real superstars and cover models and you know, they're our frontline healthcare workers and our clerks and people keeping the restaurants and you know, gas stations open. There are the people who we need to be supporting the most during this time. Thank you so much for saying that because they are the hero, the everyday heroes that we often mm -hmm. miss. And, and they deserve on the magazine covers right now. Yeah. And they really <laughs> have a spotlight on them. And they're the ones that should be sending Gucci bags. Gucci, if you're listening, they're the ones should be sending product bags, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't need them anymore in our industry. We'll be getting them all year round. Sorry, models. You don't need any more Gucci bags. <laughs> <laughs> Donate that food back. Sell them. Yeah. Give yeah. it to, to children feeding the hungers. Give it to, yeah. to the food banks. I'm, yeah. I, I, but when I leave you with this, that I truly believe that more we give, more will come back. Because a lot of people have asked, what do you get out of doing this? And I go, well, what I get out of it is that I get to donate every single day because I force myself to do this so that I will forcefully know that it's my responsibility. And then force not in a negative way. It's yeah. a validation. It's a commitment I'm doing. And it's mm -hmm. telling me to do it every day. And that's important to me. Yeah. And that is what I have to do in order to be activated, to be mm -hmm. an activist in my own way, because that's what you guys do. And mm -hmm. I learned so much from it. And that's why I'm here every day, because I'm here to learn from you guys. And I'm here mm -hmm. to continue to, to, to support our community. And you're a part of my community. So Yes, we're all one community. And you know, I hope even though we're all social distancing apart, like I hope we remember that in order to get through this, the only way to do it is together, you know? So all good things and just wishing you the best. And, you know, it's important to remember, we're, you know, things are gonna, it's, it's, there's always that rainbow at the end of the tunnel. I will get there. Well, thank you so much for being with me today and thank you for the matching donations. And yes. for those of you guys are out there, Thank you for tuning in and thank you for letting us share our journey with you and share the contribution that Lima is doing for the community. And if you want to help out anyway, go to her Instagram, watch her post, follow through on what Johnson Johnson is doing for the community, yeah. Violet Coco is doing and her UN yeah. initiative. All those things are so, so amazing Why? examples. So many exa amazing examples that we can get involved with you. So thank you again and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yutsai. Love you. Bye, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Amina and I have shared so many experiences together, and most importantly, that she's so inspiring to me now as an activist, a feminist, and doing work that truly is bettering our environment, our community. And that is a great model, a great model citizen that we can look at and emulate and then learn from. And she is such an amazing teacher to me today. And thank you guys here for supporting me. Thank you.